I think that the main change was actually through um, the introduction of social media, which, um, you know, created new advertising avenues, but it also made it much more competitive. Yeah. And then, of course, particularly through Instagram, um, it became much more physical, image-based. And now, especially through Instagram, we have this uh, situation that somebody who doesn't even practice yoga, you know, if they are, for example, a, a gymnast or a dancer, and they happen to be very, very flexible, they put a series of pictures up. Within a very short time, they have, uh, you know, 600,000 hits. And then because of that, they can promote themselves as a yoga teacher, yeah? So it's, it's become very, very physical, uh, very, very superficial and uh, image-based. Mm. Um, look, it hasn't really uh, affected my teaching. If anything, it has um, improved my teaching. Yeah, I sort of have more like out of defiance that I'm going to buck the trend. Yeah, So it hasn't like watered down my teaching or anything. Um, we always had this... See, one of the problems that we have is that the title yoga teacher is not protected. Yeah, so that means even 20 years ago, you actually couldn't do a teacher training. Yeah, and then some people st just simply watched a video or read a book and then opened a studio. We had this problem 20 years ago. Yeah, so um, of course, and then another problem that we had is that there were schools, they were simply <clears throat> authorizing um, teachers based on the fact how long they practiced posture or how good the postures were, yeah? Now, you know, from my understanding and what, in, what yoga has been handed down in India for thousands of years, it's predominantly a spiritual path. <clears throat> and all of that is getting actually lost in this modern, uh, you know, approach to yoga, which is, is merely like image-based and looks-based. There is this problem that um, yoga obviously has become a mass movement, um, that now enormous amounts of people are drawn to yoga. And that was always going to impact on yoga in some ways. Yeah? Because what we now see is that there's so many people and they want to do yoga merely for physical reasons and they're often not comfortable with the background of yoga, that it is essentially a spiritual path. And so that is being more and more edited out. Yeah. Um, of course, um, you will benefit as a, a teacher and a teacher trainee if you have practiced for a long time. Yeah. But, you know, practicing 20 years of postures only doesn't make you automatically a teacher. Yeah. So then if you would say, uh, you know, we, we want to have people only who have practiced a certain amount of time. We also would have to look what have they actually practiced. Yeah. <clears throat> so part of the problem is that, of course, even in India, you have schools which are um, predominantly uh, posture-based. Then there are schools which are predominantly meditation-based. There are schools which are, for example, devotional. Yeah. So, for example, uh, various forms of yoga such as the yoga of knowledge, the yoga of intelligence, the yoga of devotion, are mentioned already in the Bhagavad Gita, which is a text which is thousands of years old. Yeah? So there was always that diversity. And because of that, it's very difficult to say, ah, you know, like, if you're doing postures only, you're not a yogi, or if you not do postures at all, you are not a yogi, you know, because historically there was always a certain, you know, uh, diversity in yoga. Let me first say something about this term industry, mm -hmm. yeah? So about, I don't know, about 12, 15 years, somebody said, I said goodbye to that person, and they said, I'll see you around the industry. And I was like, ah, oh, the industry, huh? I've never really looked at that. So industry is a term that refers to an economic activity uh, in involving the uh, production of goods in a factory setting. Yeah, so, you know, industry, when I, um, you know, I'm practicing yoga now uh, uh, since 40 years. And I remember when I went first to India in the 1980s, 
uh, there were no facilities at all for Western travelers. So it involved um, living in a thatched roof hut with a floor which was done uh, from a mixture of cow dung and clay. Yeah? And so from that point it has now morphed to the industry, which I'm very, very surprised that it's an industry. Back then when we did yoga, we just at some point went on a spiritual quest, you know, like and uh, took a boat or whatever, or a flight to India. But it was essentially uh, a, a journey to find ourselves, yeah? Because we were sort of in some ways spat out by the industrial process, which alienates people, yeah? Where it's only about, well, you're this small cog there, yeah, in this giant machine. So we were wondering, who are we actually, yeah? And so now, it's it's a return to the machine, so to say. Yeah. Um, the quality of the students that come to us hasn't really changed, but the reason is because we're very very outspoken about who we are. Yeah. So, look. Um, I remember maybe 15 years ago, I was sitting in our office of our studio. And my office assistant got a talk, uh, got a call, and you know she closed the phone and she said to me, "Is our yoga good for bums and thighs?" And I was thinking, huh? "Bums and thighs? Wait a second, thigh, uh, um, you know, um, quadriceps, yes, uh, leg extension, bum, gluteus maximus, you know, uh, uh, hip extension. That's probably what they mean, of course, yeah." And then, you know, she answered affirmative and I thought about it afterwards and I thought, aha, what that really means is now that people really come because, you know, they want to have a shapely derriere, yeah, uh, which is, is a very, very alien uh, idea for yoga because the idea is really to find a deeper strata of yourself which is deeper than identification with the body because that's our trouble isn't it you know it's identification with the body and then something gets wrong goes wrong with the body the body becomes old the body uh, um, you know uh, gets sick you know the body breaks down the body eventually dies you know so what then then yeah and so to get over this identification of the body and over this limit limitation to identify yourself with the body that really is yoga you know and so it was a very um, bizarre moment to realize that yoga now attracts people just because they want to be in a good shape yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. And in yoga, you will get to uh, being in good shape. You know, but it's really a side product. Yeah, it's a byproduct. One problem is, of course, that um, our whole society is based on the paradigm for ambition and competition. Yeah, and so when people come with that attitude, you know, that they want to have a good shape, there's always this. Uh, idea of comparison, a good shape compared to what, yeah? How uh, they've seen some, you know, like good looking girls maybe they are on the magazine cover, I want to look like that, yeah? Then you, you're doing um, yoga and you always compare yourself to this image maybe, ah, uh, you know, the chick on the mat next to me looks better, yeah? I want to like, you know, look like her or whatever, yeah? Whereas um, the yoga is really about uh, creating an internal frame of reference. Yeah. So what makes people sick in the way how our society makes people sick is that we constantly have this external frame of ref reference. Am I good enough? Yeah. Am I worthy of being happy? Am I worthy of uh, finding love? Am I worthy of uh, accepting myself? Yeah? Am I worthy to experience peace? Yeah? And then it's always like the external frame of reference. Okay, what are my academic degrees? You know, do I have enough letters and dots behind my name? Yeah? What about the car that I'm driving? What about the amount of real estate that I'm controlling? What about the zeros on my account? You know, do I have a trophy wife? Do I have a trophy husband? It's always outside, outside, outside. And the reason why it's outside, because there's a desert inside. Yeah? We don't know ourselves, we don't love ourselves, we accept ourselves. That's why we need to um, you know, look good. You know, and so there's nothing but against looking good, 
But the idea of yoga is that all of that grows from the inside because you find freedom, uh, self-love, self-acceptance and peace inside. And then that, you know, will rise out of the core and it will change your, your physique to a certain extent, you know. Whereas, you know, for us it's like, okay, you know, this is the ideal body shape, this is how it should look, you know. It's basically human beings become commodified. Uh, our uh, society, our human society, our global society at the moment faces a huge challenge. Yeah? And essentially the challenge is that we, through consumerism, um, let's say greed, but I don't really mean that materialistic um, or, or accusatory, um, through industrialism, um, through essentially economy, uh, are destroying our very life base. Yeah? And if you look at all of those very thing, many things that are happening, you know, obviously there's global warming, you know, uh, we are cutting down the rainforest, we are poisoning the ocean, we are poisoning the atmosphere, uh, like uh, mental disorders are on the rise, you know, there's war everywhere on the, on the world. Now the biologists are telling us that we are descending into what's called the sixth mass extinction on the planet. That means we are um, making every day 60 animal species extinct. Yeah? And through all of that, the biosphere becomes more and more unstable, and then in the, in the end it collapses. Yeah? And so uh, yoga actually has a great answer for that, and the great answer is that you come to a, f to a, to a f um, point where you come to inner peace. Yeah, that doesn't mean that you're not moving anywhere, but you anymore. Yeah, that you're not experiencing, that you're not going out, you're, that you're not making a contribution. But what it means is that it doesn't come anymore from this desperate urge of wanting to have as much as possible. Yeah, and so in in that regard, um, yoga is a great answer to our social problems. You know, to our uh, ecological problems because it brings you to this po point where you realize actually you know what I have enough yeah so I'm, I'm good enough as I am you know I do love myself I accept myself and and coming from that there's not that conflict anymore okay so what yoga brings you to it brings you to a point when you can call off conflict with yourself yeah and so the reason why we are destroying the earth, the reason why we are poisoning the atmosphere, the reason why we are cutting down the trees is because we are in conflict with ourselves. We don't believe that we are good enough and that's why we do all of those crazy technological achievements which then usually backfire and 30, 40 years later we realize, oh, that wasn't actually that good. Now we realize it actually creates cancer or it kills this and this and this and then we have to come for, up with a way to fix it. And all of that essentially is a, uh, a form of inner conflict that's raging within us. It's a form of self-loathing, self-hatred, yeah, that also numbs us to the pain that is going around, around all around us, you know, the pain that we're causing other people, the pain that we're causing the plants, the animals, the planet, the forests. It numbs us to that, yeah. And so yoga comes to this point, brings us to this point where this inner conflict ends. Now when this inner conflict ends, there is actually a stanza in the Yoga Sutra that says, then all conflict outside will end too. Yeah? And this is something that I've experienced in my life. Yeah? I used to be, as a young man, I used to be quite angry. They used to, I used to attract a lot of trouble. Yeah? And all of that is gone. Yeah? And it's if we collectively call off conflict within ourselves, then all of the conflict between us as, as humans and all of the conflict between us and the nature, between us and the animals, between us and, and, and the planet, will automatically fall away. So I think that all of the crises that we experience now are really um, expressions of a spiritual crisis. It's a uh, it's an expression of the fact that we have lost our spirituality, we have lost knowledge of who we truly are, which essentially is that we, um, uh, we are nature. Yeah, we are talking about the environment, but the fact that we are talking about the environment means there is a separation between us and nature. We are nature. And yoga brings you to this experience where you actually feel that.